Okay, let's talk backings. A lot of people ask me, how do you put backings on hair bows? So I'm going to show you some of the different types of backings that are fairly popular when I go to my craft shows. And um, uh, I'll show you how to put these backings on two uh, different kinds of bows and stuff. So we're going to start with the most popular ones, which are the snap clips, the alligator clips, and the French clips. And the most popular one is the alligator clip, and especially the alligator clip with teeth. And you can get them very large or you can get them very small. They come in all different sizes. And on the back you can have, this is called a prong, you can have a single prong, or if there's two of them it's called a double prong. And the same with the ones without teeth. This is a single prong, prong, sorry, and um, you can also get ones that have two that come out that are straight. I don't have any on me right now, so that's um, why I, have, I don't have them here, but um, you can look them up on Google and um, it'll pull up some images. You can just type in dub, double prong or single prong. You can also go to hairbowmaster.com and go to um, articles and tutorials and I talk about backings on my website as well so you can and there's pictures so you can see what they are. Now for alligator clips there's a couple different things you can do to put them on and here I've got a couple of different um, pieces of felt that I've cut out. This one is just a circle that's about an inch wide. You can cut these out yourself or you can also buy them. Um, just go to like Amazon or something and type in felt circles. And what you can do is um, when you go to put it on a bow, you could put a little bit of glue on here. You could also cover these with ribbon. Um, I want to show you that really quick because that's actually really um, popular. So you can take some ribbon and put some hot glue on the back or whatever kind of glue you like to use and then cover this, open it up and put it halfway in like that. So cut it here and then seal your end and then you'll have a covered um, alligator clip. And then what you can do is put a little bit of glue on here, the hot glue, and then stick that to it. Um, and uh, you can use a ribbon to put around it. So you would put it in like this, put a little glue there, and then wrap it around. And you could put it on the top here um, and hide it under your embellishment. Or you can glue it starting right here and then come around the top and then come back through your clip so open it up and then cut it right there and then glue that down so that's one way you can put an alligator clip on is with ribbon but you can also use these felt circles and um, these would mostly be used um, for things like flowers so um, because they have that big um, center and you can't wrap a ribbon around them what you would do is and you can even use a smaller one actually since this is a smaller clip but you'd put it on here and you could put a little glue on the inside um, and set that on there and then put glue across the entire back here including the clip and on your felt and then you just turn it over and then glue it to the back like that. So that's a couple of different ways you can put on an alligator clip. Um, oh yeah, you can also take um, a felt circle. You can fold it in half and cut two little slits into it so that it's like this. And then you could take the top of the alligator clip, slide it in like that, and then put the glue all over the back, including on this little part of the clip, and then stick it on. And that's a pretty good way to to put it on too. And I have these squares over here just to show you that you can also, you know, if you want them straight, you can you can do that. Or you can also um, fold these in half long ways or short ways or long ways and make your cuts into them and then slide your alligator clip into there. So it just depends on what kind of bow you have, how large the back surface is, 
and um, you know just your own preference of how you want to secure it. Um, you can also use littler pieces of felt and use it like you can glue it around it so and then put your ribbon across. Um, some people do that for extra security, so yeah, there's a lot of ways you can put alligator clips on. And then for the snap clips, the best way I have found to put them on is um, to use the ribbon um, because it's thin enough so that when it snaps, um, it doesn't really make interfere with the snapping mechanism. If you use like a thick piece of felt, this is a thinner piece, this is stiffened felt, and it's only one millimeter thick, so that works. But if you use like the two millimeters, and then you try to do it, it's gonna, there's gonna be a gap here, and it's just not gonna hold as well. Um, and the important thing about the snap clips is just to size it so that you can still um, use the mechanism. So you want something smaller, you know, to hold it on. And I usually just use the ribbon, because I'll put it on the back of a, regular bow, um, but if you want to put it on the back of, say, a flower, then you can do the same thing that you do for alligator clips even. You can open it up and put the uh, felt on like that instead, and then put the glue on here, and then glue that on. So you can do it that way as well. So there's, there's several different ways you can also put snap clips on, too. All right, so now we're going to talk about French clips. These are called French clips, and you can they come in all different sizes. You have small ones all the way to large. And these come apart um, when you want to put a alligator, or a, sorry, a French clip on, you can cover it with ribbon, either with glue, or you can even sew it um, with these two holes here, uh, which you can also sew this to your bow. I mean, you know, if, you're, if your bow is like flat enough in the back, then you could sew that on um, if you want, but most people just kind of cover it and you can wrap it over the each end as well so that it holds pretty nicely. But these also come apart and what you would do is open it up and this little part right here you would kind of open it just a little bit to pull that out and then you'd pull this arm out and then put it on your bow put a little bit of glue on the back there and then you would wrap your ribbon around it like that and then you would put it back together so you'd make sure that this one is pointing up if I can get it in there well, let me take it off of here. I'll show you how to put it back together. So yeah, you'd make sure that this is up, okay? So you'd put it in like underneath these two things and pop it into there. So it would sit like that. And then you would just put the arm back on and make sure this one is arched with this arch touching that arch. So you just carefully put this into that hole. I am just having a hard time today. Nothing wants to cooperate with me. And then put it in the other hole. There you go. And then this right here just clips into there and holds it. And I really, I really like these because they grip the hair really tightly. And they're really good for um, people who do like um, aerobics and things like that where you really don't want those to fall out. Um, so yeah, that's a couple ways you could put the French clip on. Now we're going to talk about headbands. Um, let, let's actually backtrack here. Let's talk about the Velcro clips. So these are really good for infants. And I make these myself. I just take a piece of grosgrain ribbon and then I take a piece of Velcro and um, put one of each side you know, glue it onto there, cut it to the right size, and then that way you can just go like this around the hair and it stays pretty nicely. And this you can just put glue right on it because it's already a covered clip. So, since you need 
the whole thing of surface here. You don't want to like put ribbon over it um, usually. I mean, you could if, as long as you have enough surface there um, to hold on to the hair, but usually you can just glue these on the back. And the one thing I forgot about alligator clips is um, I make these myself, but you can also buy them online. They're called grippies. And this I made with some um, one millimeter felt. You can also use two millimeter, whatever you want. And then um, those shelf liners that um, you can get like a Dollar General, um, I gl hot glued it to there and let the hot glue kind of come through because it really gives it a nice good grip. And then what you do with these, you cut it to whatever size you need and you put glue on the top of your alligator clip and put your grippy on the top like that. You can also put one on the bottom or put one on the bottom if you've covered your clip, but 90% of the time, probably 99% people put it on the top. And that just gives it a little bit better gripping power um, for finer hair. Okay, now we're gonna talk about headbands. We have different kinds of headbands. This is a plastic headband that um, I bought already covered um, with the satin fabric. Um, and ways that you could put things on to a headband, the best ways is to put um, a felt on one side <clears throat> and then you're gonna put like your bows or flowers or whatever you want on that side of your felt and then put felt on the other side. And you would use different sizes depending on how big your bow is or how big your flowers are that you're putting on. You know, you can put one or two on here because um, it's big enough. If you're putting a whole line of stuff, kind of like this one, then you would use a larger piece of felt. And if you're just putting a bow, though, you can just use the ribbon for that and just, you know, wrap it around the ribbon and the headband. So you'd wrap it around the ribbon, or the bow, sorry, and around the headband, and then glue it, you know, on this, on this side so that it would hold like that. And then um, on these kind of headbands, these are really popular. These are crochet headbands. And let me tell you, when you go to glue your bows on, they can get pretty hot underneath. So you gotta be careful. And then if you're making these for infants, um, you can also sew this on uh, so that, you know, it's still nice and soft on the inside. But if you choose to glue it on, you're gonna wanna take a piece of felt and cover that glue on the inside so that it's still soft when it um, sits against the infant's head. And um, like I said, you can also sew those on to there. This is a nylon uh, baby band. Um, I just get these on Amazon. They look like a large ponytail holder, but they're really super stretchy and they're really soft, so they're really good for infants. And the same thing, if you put your bow on, you can just wrap it with ribbon and glue it underneath. Make sure you wrap it around the actual headband as well. Um, or you can use the felt pieces. If you're like, you know, putting a flower on or something, you'd put your felt piece on and then you could put a circle on the top. Um, here, let's get one of the circles out just to kind of show you. And then, you know, glue your flower on like that or you can glue this directly to the bottom. If you already have a felt circle on the bottom of your flower like that then you just glue this to that and then glue your flower to the headband and that just makes sure that it's nice and secure in there. And you can also sew them on if you have just regular bows that you're putting on there. And the same thing, this is a very popular one too. This is an elastic headband. Um, it's called Foldover Elastic, and you can get that on Amazon in all different colors and stuff. And you just cut it to the size you want. Um, for older people, it's like 18 inches is usually good. And for babies, um, probably about 14, 15 inches. And these, these stretch pretty good. But just measure the infant's head um, so that you know how where to cut it. And then what I do is just seal the ends with a lighter really quick just um, to make sure that they're not going to fray. And then hot glue them together um, at the ends so that they overlap each other. And then you've got a elastic headband. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about um, 
ponytail holders. So I'm going to kind of move these aside here. If you want to add a ponytail holder to the back, let's say we wanted to add one to a flower. And so what you would do is you'd put your felt piece on the back of your flower and then you would take, let me find the felt piece that has the cuts in it. Where'd you go? Oh, here we are. Okay, so for this, what you'd do, we've got the one that has the two cuts in it, and you would take your ponytail holder and right in between those cuts, put some glue right there, and then stick this to it, like this, and then take another smaller piece of felt, and what you're gonna do is put one side up through here, through that hole, and then you can glue, you'll have this glued into here. You're gonna put this over and then put it back through this hole so that it sits like this. And um, you'll glue, put some glue underneath each of these sides right here so that um, it sits like this and holds it. And then you would just glue that to the back of this. And you can do that for any type of ponytail holder. Um, these are smaller ones that you can use for like toddlers and stuff. And then you have the larger ones for like um, bigger people and um, like adults. And then also another way, um, also with any kind of band, you can always wrap ribbon around them, you know, um, just like we did all the other ones. You can just put it on like this and wrap the ribbon around and glue it at the bottom there or at the top of your bow. So you can always do that with any kind of band. Now I got these on nbeads.com uh, and what these are is um, an embellishment holder and what you do is you take your ponytail and you put it um, in between this part here and then this flat surface is what you would glue your embellishment on with and um, if you're doing plastic embellishments like centers and stuff um, jewels whatever make sure you use um, like something like E6000 or something like that to put that on so it doesn't come off easily and they just have different sizes depending on what you want to put them around. So they've got this size. If you have like a thicker band, you can use it for this one. Um, and then they also have these really tiny ones. Like if you use those really small skinny bands, you can use these little clear ones. And I'm going to leave all the links in the description so you can find these yourself too. Sorry, I needed to take a sip of coffee there. Okay, now the last one we're going to talk about is combs. So there's a couple of different ways you can do combs. Um, these kind of combs that I get on, uh, I think I got them on Amazon, they have like this ridge here that has some space. And I really like these for putting um, like veils on because you can take tool and put them in between each thing and then knot them. But you can also sew things onto here. Um, so you can always sew things on easily. But you can also use a long strip of um, felt. And you can either sew or glue this onto here with a, with a really good glue that will hold it on. And then glue all your pieces to this. So yeah, you can do that either way. And then I've also got these little ones that um, they have holes in the side. So you would use those to sew them on to um, your hair piece. And then I get a lot of requests for shoe bows and this is called a shoe clip. And it has like two teeth right here and you would sew this onto the back of your bow that you wanna put on your shoe. So you just sew it right there to the back and then when you clip it onto the shoe, it would go like right on the toe part and that the grippers would keep it from coming off. Um, you could also glue these on, um, but it's best to sew them on so that they don't come off since you do a lot of walking with shoes. And then another thing I, I get is a lot of requests for like flower pins and stuff. Um, so 
These have the holes here so you can sew them on if you want or you can um, use hot glue and make sure the hot glue mushrooms up through these holes just a little bit and that'll keep it from coming off. Um, or you can just use like a jewelry metal glue or something and um, if you want you can also just glue a piece of felt to it first and then glue your flower on if you want. And these come in different sizes and styles. This one has a locking end which I really like for kids. Pretty much anybody actually because then they don't easily come open. And um, I had some of these shorter ones that um, have just a little clip that holds them in here but they do kind of get pushed out easily so I really like the locking ones the best. They work pretty good and they come in different sizes. And then the last type of pin you have um, is the little label pins. Um, and you can get these on Amazon too. I'll leave all the links in the description. And you could even take this and put it through the center of a piece of felt. And then glue it onto the back of your flower or whatever you're doing. And then they can just put it through their collar or whatever and put the back on. So that's that's the best way to put those on is with a piece of felt and just cut it to whatever size you need. And um, oh yeah we forgot about the bobby pin so I want to show you what you can do for bobby pins like if you want to just put um, little flowers or you know little embellishments in the hair. So I've found the best way to put a bobby pin on, and it depends on how big your embellishment is, but this one I folded in half and cut a little bit of a hole into the center, and you just fit that through the center of that and pull it over um, to the end like this, and then um, to secure it you put another piece of felt on top of it, and then you can put um, your little embellishment on that way. And that's the best way to do with these bobby pins I have found. And then the last thing that we need to talk about is pet bows because I get a lot of requests for pet bows as well. So um, the first way is to use grooming bands. Um, these I just got um, the variety size at like Dollar General. Um, and it came with small up to large and so I use the smaller ones for like smaller collars and then like bigger ones for bigger collars. And like this is a piece of felt. You can just put both of them onto this and then glue them onto the back of the bow. And that way what they can do is put this, you know, over the collar. Um, so yeah, it would be glued on right there and then they can just slip the collar through those. And then um, you can also use ribbon. So you, use, you can use ribbon or felt. And then I get these um, it's a double-sided Velcro. Uh, they have these at Walmart um, where you, um, they're the ties, you know, they're backed by like the zip ties and stuff and you can just cut the ends off to where they're even. And I like to leave them whole like this and let them, uh, let the customer cut it to size that they need. Um, like if they're buying one for their dog and they don't have their dog with them. Um, that way they can just like trim it to whatever size they need for that collar. Um, but for these you have to make sure that you put them on this way because they're going to go you know, around the collar. So in order to do that you can just glue those on. Um, but since dogs are pretty rambunctious and stuff I usually secure it down with either a piece of ribbon by gluing it down like that or with a piece of felt. And then you just would wrap that around the collar and it would hold like that. So. Um, I think that's all the backings and I just wanted to kind of show you some of the different kinds of backings you can use and um, if you want any more information please leave a comment um, and I will answer your comments. Um, any questions, if there's any to, uh, anything you want to see more in depth just let me know and I will make a better uh, tutorial for that piece or, or whichever ones you want to know about. And for any more information, you can also visit my website at hairbowmaster.com. It's fairly new, so I'm still putting a lot of stuff on there. Um, but you can get a hold of me on there, too, by clicking on the contact link. So thanks for joining the Hairbow Master. I hope this has helped you, and I hope you have a great day.